Hello, everyone. This is the 68th episode of the Soccer Nostalgia Talk podcast. As always, this is Sean from Los Angeles, and I'm joined by Paul from Shipley in England. For this episode, we interview Romanian journalist Mr. Catalin Tudos as we discuss the matches of the Romanian national team during the 1982-83 season. Mr. Tudos works in the IT field, but he has in the past cooperated with electronic sport publications and even designed and managed www.sport365.ro. Welcome, Catalin. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you, Shahan, for the introduction. Hello, Paul. Nice to be here. I'm looking forward for our discussion. Nice to meet you too, Catalin. Thank you for joining us. And can you just introduce yourself and tell us about your early football memories and history with the game? Yes, I am born, raised and live in Romania for practically the entire life. So I know what's happening here. I was born with uh, the football in front of my eyes. I have uh, very early memories about my home team, Fece Argeș in uh, the end of the 70s. And uh, at the beginning of the 80s, I have even more and more uh, memories because I was, I was starting to be more and more interested about football. I was attending uh, matches on the stadium. I was following the not so many newspapers that were at that time and uh, matches on TV. As time uh, passed by, as Shahan uh, said, I was uh, involved in uh, journalism at uh, some extent. I uh, designed and I managed for some time uh, www.sports365.ro. It uh, lasted for a few years as a national website. My current activity and my overall uh, activity is in the IT field, but I'm still connected with uh, sport, with football and with journalism. Thank you. Can you describe the state of Romanian football in the fall of 1982? Yes. Yes, I have good memories from then. We may say that uh, there were some hopes and some concerns. There were some hopes because uh, we had very good players. We had some successes at the level of the clubs. We had uh, the new Coach Mircea Lucescu, you know him very well. He's still active uh, today. So he started his activity in uh, the national team in the fall of 1981. But at the same time, there were some concerns because we had failed to qualify for the last uh, World Cups. And uh, we had failed by losing some important decisive matches. So there were concerns about the possibility, the, cap- the capability of uh, wor- working and playing under high pressure for a decisive match. But however, we, we were having the good hopes and uh, <coughs> we we're having many, many good players that uh, were raising at uh, that time. They were allowed only to play in Romania, very, very few exceptions. And uh, generally, uh, they, were all, uh, they were allowed only by the end of their career. So let's say we have hopes and we have some concerns. And what were the expectations from the press and public regarding these Euro 84 qualifiers, especially being drawn in a group with the recent World Cup champions, Italy? And we should also remind everyone that only one country could qualify from these groups as well. The group uh, looked very tough from the very beginning. The truth is that Italy was not yet world champion at the start of the qualifiers. We had already played against Cyprus in Hunedoara, May 1st, 1982, uh, uh, right before the World Cup. But uh, looking at the group names, it was clear that there were tough names. There were tough countries with tradition, with results. Czechoslovakia and Italy were going to the World Cup. They had previous very good results, uh, including in 1980 in uh, the European Championship, where they were playing for places three and four. 
But at the same time, uh, based on the, the hopes, uh, there were still some small hopes. I remember some uh, declarations uh, in the summer, and I remember something that Florin Halagian was saying. Florin Halagian was uh, an important coach inside the country. He was nicknamed Armano because he was of Armenian descent, Halagian. And he was saying, I, I'm not afraid of, of Italy because after being world champions, they will fall for sure. And this is what happened uh, indeed for uh, these qualifiers. So even if he and some people were saying, okay, Italy will have some tough times, and that was confirmed, there were still two very important opponents, Czechoslovakia and Sweden, and it was provided that uh, they were much tougher during these uh, qualifiers. You mentioned earlier Romania manager Mircea Lucescu, who is a coaching legend at this point. However, around this time, he probably was not well known to the public at large. Can you describe his trajectory and his position at that point in time? Yes, sure. We may say that he was well known in Romania, not well known at the large time for sure, but he was very well known in Romania. He had played for many years for Dinamo Bucharest with very good results. He had captained the Romanian national team for the World Cup in 1970 in Mexico. And in the summer of 1977, he decided to move to Hunedoara. Hunedoara is a city, a small city in Romania, approximately in the center of the country industrial city. They were having a team at uh, that time, Corvinul, and he decided to move there to prepare for his coaching career. For some time, he acted there as player and coach at the same time. And he was uh, starting to raise a few players that uh, later were important players in the Romanian national team, like Andone, Rednik, Klein, they were all there uh, like his children in Hunedoara. And in the fall of 1981, he, after uh, missing the, the qualification for the World Cup in 82, he was appointed as interimary coach. But it proved to have some good results and uh, a good plan. And he was uh, allowed to, to continue. He was continuing to be active in Hunedoara and uh, in the national uh, team for some time. This raised some controversy at that time. How can you do these things to, to run away from Bucharest to Hunedoara? It's a pretty long road and to be involved in all the things, but he achieved to, to do the things. So he was at the beginning of uh, his uh, coaching career especially in the national team. He turned 37 in the summer of uh, 82. And he was making plans for the future of the national team of Romania. The season starts off with a couple of friendlies in August against Japan. The first match in August 15th at Suchavas. We have the following lineup for Romania. Dumitro Moraru of Dinamo Bucharest, Mircea Rednik of Corvinul. He'll be replaced by Nicole Unguriano of Universitaya Craiva in the 58th minute. Captain of the side, Kostika Stefanescu of Universitaya Craiva. He'll be replaced by Ioan Andon of Corvinul in the 65th minute. Gino Yorgolescu of Sportul Studentesk. Johan Bogdan of Corvinul, he replaced by Marian Mihail of Sportul Studentesk in the 46th minute. Orel Ticlianu of Universitaya Craiva. Ladisla Boloni of Tirgumures. Michael Klein of Corvinul. Ili Balaci of University Craiva. Romulus Gabor of Corvinul, he replaced by Floria Vetus of Dinamo Bucharest in the 46th minute. Viorel Turku of Arges Pitesti, he replaced by Dudu Georgescu of Dinamo Bucharest in the 54th minute. This first match, Romania won 4 0. 
Klein scored in the 22nd minute, Turku in the 24th minute, Bologna in the 52nd minute, and Georgescu in the 80th minute. Three days later, on August 18, Romania hosted Japan, this time at Bucharest. For this match, we have in the lineup Dumitro Moraru, Mircea Rednik, Kostika Stefanescu, he replaced by Ion Andon in the 46th minute. <laughs> Gino Yorgulescu, Ion Bogdan, he replaced by Nicolae Ungurianu in the 58th minute. Orel Ticlianu, he replaced by Gavril Balint of Stoya Bucharest in the 74th minute. Ladisla Boloni, Michael Klein, he replaced by Marian Mihail in the 78th minute. Captain of the side, Ili Balacci, he replaced by international debutant Alexandru Kustov of Dinamo Bucharest in the 58th minute. Viorel Turku, he replaced by Ion Golgu in the 46th minute. Floria Vetas, he replaced by Dudu Georgescu in the 46th minute. This was Viorel Turku's seventh and final cap. All his caps were in 1982. So this match, Romania won 3 1. Bologna scored in the 42nd minute, and Georgescu scored in the 70th and 86th minute, and Tetsuya Totsuka scored the first goal for Japan in the 12th minute. Next, we have another friendly on September 1st, again in uh, Bucharest, this time against Denmark. For this match, we have the following lineup. Making his international debut, Helmut Dukadam in goal, of Unizal Textal Araden, Mircea Rednik, Gino Yorgulescu, Stefan Sames of Stoya Bucharest. He replaced by Ion Andon in the 80th minute. Nicole Ungurianu, Orel Ticlianu, Ladisla Boloni, Michael Klein, captaining the team Ili Balacci, Romulus Gabor. He replaced by Sorin Sirtu of University of Kraiva in the 63rd minute. Rodion Kamataru of University Kraiva, and he replaced by Mircea Sandu of Sportul Studentes in the 40th minute. And this was Sandu's final, 16th and final cap. His first cap had been in 1972. So this match, Romania won 1 0. Balachi scored the winner in the sixth minute. This Denmark team was an up and coming team that would take the continent by storm in less than two years' time. They had the likes of Molby, Jesper Olsen, Lars Bostrup, among others on that day. So this is an opportunity um, to look at some of these better-known players. Who were the key players in this Mm -hmm. team at the time? Let's say that, you see, we played against Japan first in Suchava and then in Bucharest. And it was an idea by supported mainly by Mircea Lucescu at that time to bring the team in some uh, other cities, even smaller cities, in order uh, the public to get in contact uh, with the national uh, team. As uh, Shahan was reading the lineups, we can have a few comments and uh, look at the most important names. For the goalkeeper, Dumitru Moraru is playing the first two matches against Japan. Helmut Dukadam is making his international debut in the match against Denmark. And you have to keep in mind that he had only two selections in the national team. This match uh, against Denmark and a few minutes against East Germany later. What is happening? He was a young player then. He was uh, just to move from Arad to to Stawa, and there was a high concurrency uh, at that time for uh, the goalkeeper. Dumitru Moraru and Silvio Lung were, uh, and especially Silvio Lung, were the main candidates for the next years. And he he was not able to, to be a constant player at that time. He moved, uh, just in 82, he moved to, to Stawa. He played there. He won the Champions Cup in 86. Uh, saving four penalties in uh, in the final. And after that, he had an accident and he couldn't play any longer. And he remained with these two, only two matches in the national team. So this was his destiny. 
he's still present now in the Romanian television. Uh, he's making comments. He's involved uh, in football. But he shines at the level of the clubs. He shines so brightly in uh, the final of the Champions Cup in 86. But he didn't have the chance to play for the national team more than twice. That was his destiny. Other important players there to remark. Berni. He was called back by Mircea Lucescu in the fall of 81, uh, in the last match against Switzerland. Lucescu's first match as a national coach. He played one minute, the last minute he replaced, he entered as a replacement. And then he, he started to be a constant presence again, again, because he made a break of about one year. So he started to be a constant presence in the national team again. And he was elected as the best Romanian player of 83. You have already mentioned uh, a few other names from Corvinul Hunedoara and Mircea Rednik, Ioan Andone, Mihail Klein became important players of the national uh, team of Romania and later of Dinamo Bucharest. They were all promoted by Mircea Lucescu. Ioan Bogdan was also from Corvino, but he did not have uh, such a good career as the other three I mentioned. And one important player to mention is Romulus Gabor. He didn't uh, leave Corvino. Let's say that he was effectively the successor of Maradona. What do I mean? In 81, for the Youth World Cup, he was elected the player of the tournament in 81. And he was the successor of Maradona because Maradona was the player of the tournament in 79, in the previous tournament. We had big hopes, of course, but he didn't continue at the same high level. Maybe for various reasons, maybe he was not able to move to a big club, maybe for his life, for other things. But he remained in Corvino for his uh, lifetime career and was not able to have the same uh, career as uh, the other ones. But all of them are to be mentioned as Lucescu's children promoted from uh, Corvino Hunedoara. Other important players are uh, the ones from uh, Universitatea Craiova, Cicleanu, Camataru, Balac, of course. Balac was at the height of uh, his uh, career. He was elected the uh, best player in Romania in 81 and 82. And he shined. He was shining uh, during those times. Kamataru was the number nine, the striker. He was also reconsidered by Mircea Lucescu, just like Belloni. He had some problems after the match against Hungary in uh, the World Cup qualifiers in 81 because that match ended in a scoreless draw and many people uh, booed him and he was upset and uh, was thinking about why am I coming to the national team? But uh, Lucescu said, I need you. And he came uh, again uh, to the national team and he, he raised again and he had a nice career. Other names, Viorel Turku, the unlucky Viorel Turku. He had a lot of uh, health problems. He passed away about one year ago. He had problems with diabetes, with some uh, amputated leg. But at that time, he was a hope of the uh, Romanian football. Unfortunately, he was not able to achieve uh, bigger success, also because of some uh, personal health uh, problems. And uh, uh, let's mention also Dudu Georgescu, who was well known in the 70s. He was top scorer of the Divizia, that was the name of the first league. He is uh, overall still today the top scorer of the internal championship. He was by that time, by the end of his career, he was uh, 32 that year. But he, he was still trying to play at a high level. Probably Lucescu tried to play again with him because he knew him for a long time, they were uh, in the same team at Dinamo Bucharest. But he was by the end of his career. He played against Sweden in an official match, but after that, I think he played.
played only one friendly in 84 and that was all. He was 32 already. We should also mention that Michael Klein, he died of a heart attack. Yes. Age 33. In 93 in in Germany. Yes. As he was training with his club, Bayer Uerdingen. We come to the first qualifier of the season. But of course, we mentioned earlier that the Romania had already played a qualifier at the end of the previous season against Cyprus uh, and won 3-1. On September 8th at Bucharest, Romania hosted Sweden. For this match, we have the following lineup for Romania. Dumitru Muraru, Mircea Rednik, Ion Andon, Gino Yorgulescu, Nicolae Ungurianu, Ladisla Boloni, Orel Ticliano, Michael Klein. He replaced by Alexandru Kustov in the 85th minute. This was Kustov's second and final cap. Captain the team, Ili Balac, Romulus Gabor. He replaced by Sorin Sirtu in the 69th minute and Dudu Georgescu. So this important match, Romania would win 2-0. Andon would score first in the 25th minute when he headed in Bologna's corner from the left side. Michael Klein would score the second goal in the 47th minute. Bologna's corner from the right side this time led to a scramble in the box and Klein scored with an overhead kick. Potentially, Sweden were going to be one of their main rivals. This was a decisive win for Romania. Next, we have a couple of months off, and Romania would play a friendly in November. On November 17th, they traveled to East Germany at uh, Karmarkstadt. For this match, we have the following lineup Dumitro Moraru, and he'd be replaced by Helmut Dukadam in the 87th minute. As you mentioned earlier, this was his final cap for the national team. Mircea Rednik, Johan Andon, he replaced by Stefan Sames in the 55th minute. Gino Yorgulescu, Ion Bogdan, Yonel Agustin of Dinamo Bucharest, Ladisla Boloni, capping the team Ili Balac, uh, Michael Klein, Romulus Gabor. Marin Radu of Arges Pitesti, and he replaced by international debutant Marcel Korash of UTA Arad in the 75th minute. So for Samus, this was his final cap, his 46th and final cap. His first cap had been in 1973. We mentioned Dukadam, this was his final cap, as well as Marin Radu. This was his seventh and final cap. His first cap had been 1976. This match, Romania would lose 4-1. Dieter Kuhn scored in the 30th in the 65th minute. Rudiger Schnufe scored in the 40th minute. And Jürgen Huyn scored in the 85th minute. Bologna scored Romania's goal in the 61st minute. Next, we have the important qualifier against world champions Italy in Florence on December 4th. Let's go through the Italian lineup first. The recent World Cup champions managed by Enzo Bierzot. Captain of the team, Dino Zoff of Juventus. Gabriel Oriali of Inter. Claudio Gentile of Juventus. Giampiero Marini of Inter. Fulvio Colovati of Inter. Franco Baresi of AC Milan, Bruno Conti of Roma, Marco Tardelli of Juventus, Paolo Rossi of Juventus. He replaced by Franco Causio of Udinese in the 46th minute, Giancarlo Antonioni of Fiorentina, Francesco Graziani of Fiorentina, and he replaced by Alessandro Altobelli of Inter in the 19th minute. Now, going to the Romanian lineup, we have Silvio Lung of University of in goal, Mircea Rednik, Nicolae Ungurianu, Orel Ticlianu, who would be sent off in the 55th minute, Gino Iorgulescu, 
captain of the team, Kostika Stefanescu. Romulus Gabor, he replaced by Ion Andon in the 58th minute. Michael Klein. Rodon Kamataru, he replaced by Ionel Agustin in the 85th minute. Ladisla Boloni and Ili Balac. Romania came away with a scoreless tie in Italy. I'm assuming this must have given them the necessary confidence. Yeah. So you see, you mentioned the two official games and one friendly one. And you see some contrast between the results. Uh, because at that time, Lucescu was still making some experiments. He was less interested about uh, the results of the friendlies. But he managed to win against Sweden. He managed to take uh, a draw in Italy. And we may say that there is already a skeleton of uh, the national team based on the players of Universitatea Craiova. We already mentioned uh, Aurel Cicleanu, Balac, Camataru, but you also have Lung now as a goalkeeper against Italy now. And that became for those years some skeleton of, of the national team. Together with players from uh, Corvino, that uh, were uh, Lucescu's uh, children, and sometimes from uh, Dinamo, a few more sometimes were coming from Steaua, which was not uh, yet the big team that uh, it became uh, a little later. What we should say here is what I remember very well, the match against Sweden was highly dominated by Romania, and to mention the two players that scored, Andone and Klein, were coming from Corvino uh, Hunedoara. And it was very much enthusiasm at that time for the result. The stadium was full. The press was together with the team. In fact, before this match, Romania had never beaten Sweden. And now Romania beat uh, Sweden 2-0 uh, in an enthusiastic game. For the match against Italy, that was also a really, really important match. And Italy was coming after some disappointing qualifiers. They had won the World Cup in uh, Spain uh, that summer and they started the qualifiers, but not, they were not so successful. And they had to play uh, Romania in uh, Florence in December of '82. And the match was definitely highly dominated by Italy. And as you mentioned, Romania even had that uh, red card. Aurel Ciclano was sent off in the 55th uh, minute. But they were continuously attacking Italy, but were, they were not able to score. I remember about a big opportunity, I think, from, from Conti in the 89th minute. He was just in front of Lung with... The goal was almost empty and he missed. Cristian Sopescu was broadcasting the match. And after this big opportunity in the 89th minutes from uh, Bruno Conti, he said, we're not going to lose uh, with uh, the match. Uh, the luck is with uh, us today. And the match ended in a scoreless draw. I remember the headlines from the match played on Saturday, the headlines from, from Monday. Papers, newspapers were not printed on Sunday. Berzot recognized the quality of the Romanian national team. He said, complimenti Lucescu. Congratulations, Lucescu. And the Romanian press said, Italy shouldn't complain about the fact that we played defensively. Because it is Italy that taught the world defensive at any cost for decades. And... With this scoreless draw, there were uh, good hopes for uh, the next year. The next match was to be played, the next official match of the group was to be played again uh, against Italy in uh, April 83. But for the winter and uh, for the winter holidays, we had a very good mood and we had uh, a very, very good hopes because uh, the results and uh, the behavior of the team were really providing support for these good hopes. Let's talk about Silvio Lung, who would in time join Stoya Bucharest. 
at this point, it seems like he's alternating with Moraru. But for this very important match, he got the nod, even though he still had not played during the season. Yes. For some time, he was alternating with Dimitri Moraru as a goalkeeper. A little later, he became the, the main goalkeeper. He was playing most of the matches. He had a big career in Universitata Craiova. By the end of uh, the 80s, he moved to Steaua because Steaua and Dinamo were starting to take all good players at uh, that time. He had a very big career both in uh, Craiova and in Steaua. And uh, he participated with the Romanian national team at two final tournaments, Euro 84 and the World Cup 90. He had very good results. One thing that he was not so skilled for were the penalties. I remember he were, was able to stop two penalties in a qualifier Universitata Craiova Betis Sevilla for the penalty shootout and also against the national team of Spain in the last minute he saved the penalty but otherwise he was not so lucky with penalties mentioning here especially the penalty shootout against Ireland in uh, the 1990 World Cup when he was not able to stop any of those penalties but he had otherwise he had a very good career by the beginning of the 1990s he played in uh, abroad and he came back to Romania after that he was Doubtless the main goalkeeper of the national uh, Romanian team that in this period, mid 80s up to 1990. Ahead of the next qualifier against Italy in April, Romania has a series of friendlies in the new year 1983. The first friendly of the year is on January 29th at Turkey at Istanbul. For this match, we have the following lineup. Dumitro Moraru, Mircea Rednik, Ion Andon, Gino Yorgolescu, Ewan Montiano of Sportul Studentesk, Ionel Agustin, Captain Ladisla Boloni, Michael Klein, Marcel Coras, he replaced by Gavril Balint in the 65th minute, making his international debut, Pompiliu Yordach of Dinamo Bucharest, he replaced by Another international debutant, Petre Nika of Arges Pitesti in the 65th minute, and Romulus Gabor. So this match ended in a 1 1 tie. Gabor gave Romania the lead in the ninth minute. Turkey tied the match in the 33rd minute through Sel- Selkuk Yula's penalty kick in the 33rd minute. Next few days later, on February 2nd, the team traveled to Larissa to face Greece. So for this match, we have Silvio Lung in goal. He replaced by Dumitro Muraro in the 46th minute. Mircea Rednik, captaining the team, Kostika Stefanescu. He replaced by Ion Andon in the 77th minute. Gino Yorgulescu, Nikolai Ungurianu, Gavril Balint. He replaced by Ionel Agustin in the 66th minute. Ladisla Boloni, Michael Klein, Ili Balac, Romulus Gabor. He replaced by Pompilo Yordach. This was his second and final cap. He replaced in the 57th minute. Rodion Kamataru. He replaced by Marcel Koras in the 83rd minute. This match, Romania won 3 1. Ladisla Boloni gave Romania the lead in the 10th minute. Vajelis. Kusulakis tied the match in the 16th minute, and Rodion Kamataru would score two goals in the 24th minute and 46th minute. A few days later, on March 9th, Romania hosted Turkey at Targumures. So for this match, we have Dumitro Moraru, he replaced by Silvi Lung in the 46th minute, Mircea Rednik, Ion Andon, Gino Yorgolescu, Nicolai Ungurianu, he replaced by Ion Montiano in the 64th minute. Gavril Balint, he replaced by Orel Ticliano in the 64th minute. Ladisla Boloni, Michael Klein, 
captaining the team Ili Balac, Yon Golgu of University of Krajowa. He replaced by Ramirez Gabor in the 46th minute. Rodion Kamataru, and he replaced by Marcel Koras in the 80th minute. Romania would win this match 3-1. Balac would score the first goal in the seventh minute. Then he would score a penalty kick in the 19th minute. Rasit Setiner would pull a goal back for Turkey in the 36th minute. And Bologna would score Romania's third in the 87th minute. At the end of that month of March, Romania would host Yugoslavia at Timisoara. So for this match, we have the following lineup. Dimitro Moraro, he will be replaced by Silvio Lung in the 46th minute. Mircea Rednik, Kostika Stefanescu, Gino Iorgolescu, he will be replaced by Oral Tikliano in the 75th minute. Nicolae Unguriano, Ionel Agustin, he will be replaced by Gavril Balint in the 24th minute, who in turn will be replaced by Ion Andon in the 59th minute. Ladisla Boloni, Michael Klein, captain of the team Ili Balac, Ion Golgu, Romulus Gabor, and he replaced by Sorin Sirtu in the 46th minute. Romania would lose this match 2-0. Jasmine Zeko would score in the 14th minute, and Alexander Trifonovic would score the second goal in the 86th minute. What can we say here? A few important things. So there were four friendlies before the official match against Italy. What's uh, remarkable uh, here? A few things. They were still experimenting things. Experimenting, we may say that even the place where uh, the matches were played were some experiments. You see that we had a match in Târgu Mureș and one match in Timișoara, so outside Bucharest. I was saying that it was important that people from other cities or even towns may see uh, the national uh, team. The results of these friendlies were not so important. I remember the match against Yugoslavia that we lost in Timisoara just two and a half weeks uh, before uh, the official match against Italy. And you see that it didn't count. After that loss in a friendly came that big victory in uh, an official match against the world champions. More to mention here that there were some important names that we didn't uh, analyze before. Two more uh, players from Universitatea Craiova, Kostika Ștefanescu, who for many years was captain of uh, the national team. He was already an important player in uh, Universitatea Craiova, but uh, he became uh, more and more important he was sometimes nicknamed the Ministry of the Defense because he, his uh, role in the defensive was uh, extremely important. Nicolae Ungureanu, who was the left back and was also a player of importance of uh, those years. And I was uh, telling you a little earlier that the skeleton of the national team was based on Universitatea Craiova. You also mentioned... Ion Jolgo at some time. He was not uh, one of the main key players, but later in the autumn of 1983, he scored the decisive goal in Bratislava, the qualifying goal against Czechoslovakia. Just to mention uh, now his name. And also you mentioned Gavril Pele Balit. He was very young at uh, that time. He was uh, playing uh, usually not the full uh, match in, uh, in most cases. He uh, was uh, 20 years old in 1983. He had just moved to, to Steaua Bucharest. He is uh, coming from uh, St. George's Bay, who is in, uh, somehow in the middle of the, of the country. And I remember he was uh, in his youth uh, and uh, in an interview for the newspaper Sport at that time, he said, my father advised me to move only to Stella. And he moved to Stella and 
it proves that it was a very good choice. He made some uh, good uh, career there. He scored one penalty in uh, the final of the Champions Cup in 86 and then uh, also played abroad in uh, in Spain. Nowadays, he is uh, acting as a journalist for uh, a television here. So I, uh, I mentioned I wanted to review a few more names. I would like not to miss any important players of those years. So all these friendlies were preparation for the qualifier against Italy. And Italy had been struggling in this group and in fact had only managed to draw in Cyprus in, in February. So what, what was the atmosphere in Romania going into this game? Was it confidence? It was it was still pretty pretty confident because we really saw that there were good players. We had very good results with Universitatea Craiova, who was at that time during its best season. It was nicknamed Craiova Maxima. It uh, played the UEFA Cup semifinals uh, that uh, spring. And we saw that atmosphere and the struggle for results. And the match against Italy was very important. Italy was coming with the last hopes because they had, I think they had three draws uh, in three matches before that one. And with one single team qualifying for the final tournament, they had uh, no other choice than uh, to win in, in Bucharest. So let's talk about this important match on April 16th at Bucharest. Let's go through the Italian lineup first, managed by Enzo Bierzot. Capping the team, you have Dino Zoff of Juventus, Claudio Gentile of Juventus, Antonio Cabrini of Juventus, Giampiero Marini of Inter, Fulvio Colovati of Inter, Gaetano Shirea of Juventus, Bruno Conti of Roma, Marco Tardelli of Juventus, Paolo Rossi of Juventus, Giancarlo Antonioni of Fiorentina. He replaced by Giuseppe Dosena of Torino in the 56th minute. Roberto Bettega of Juventus. And he replaced by Alessandro Altobelli of Inter in the 69th minute. And uh, let's go to the Romanian lineup. Silvio Lung actually missed this match through injury. So Dumitro Moraru started in goal. Also, Liano was suspended from this match after he was sent off in a previous encounter. We have Dumitro Muraru, Mircea Rednik, Gino Iorgulescu, capping the team, Costica Stefanescu, Nicolae Unguriano, Ionel Agostin, he replaced by Ion Andon in the 70th minute, Ladisla Boloni, Michael Klein, Ili Balac, Ion Jolgu, He'd be replaced by Sorin Sirtu in the 87th minute and Rodion Kamataru. Kamataru scored a goal in the 11th minute that was disallowed after there was a push on Zof in the box. But in the 23rd minute, Ladisla Boloni scored a winner from an indirect free kick. At this point, Italy's hopes were gone and Romania seemed set to stake a claim for the finals. There were good hopes for, for this match. And what I remember is that in a particular discussion with the, the journalist Juan Kirila, he was probably the most important journalist of those years, Kirila confessed that Lucescu told him, I hope to have some free kicks in front of Italy's uh, goal because I hope to score from uh, such a free kick. And this is how it happened. The match was decided by this goal by Belloni together with Balac. Balac uh, made the move of, of the ball and uh, Belloni shot to the goal. He surprised Zoff. And that was the decisive goal of this match. What uh, I remember is that uh, the next day, the title of the newspaper was It is the Dacians that won, because here we have some uh, important history events with the 
Roman Empire that coming from Italy, from what is today Italy, came to Dacia, which is nowadays Romania and conquered. And they said now the Dacians won. That was one of the title. Otherwise, it was big enthusiasm for uh, the result in this game. You see that we already have some very good skeleton of the national uh, team. I mentioned the, the players in Universitatea Craiova. I mentioned uh, Lucescu's uh, children from, from Hunedoara. Just uh, to add here from the people's, from the players that I uh, didn't analyze, Gino Iorgulescu was uh, playing in Sportul Studențesc uh, at that time. He later became an important person in Romanian football. Nowadays, he is the president of the football, uh, professional football league. Ionel Augustin, he was also a pretty important player. He was playing for Dinamo Bucharest. And he had very good results also with Dinamo, winning the championship a few times and uh, playing uh, in 80, in the spring of 84, the semifinals of the Champions Cup. And uh, Sorin Kurtzu was also coming from uh, Universitatea Craiova. He was uh, a pretty important player for, for the national team, but he was coming in the late stages, usually in the late stages of the match. He was a striker. He made high career after uh, that as a coach. And he was known for, for his defensive style, even if he was a striker. He was nicknamed Sorinaccio because as a merge between his name Sorin and Catenaccio. And he's still active in Craiova nowadays in an administrative position. He's not coaching any longer. Probably this, this match was one of the defining matches of that uh, generation. But I wouldn't place it higher or much higher than other important uh, matches, like the one in Sweden that we are going to talk about immediately, and especially uh, the match in Bratislava, the decisive qualifying match. But it was a very important win because it was the first win of Romania against a current World Cup winner. About a month later, there's another decisive qualifier. This time at home at Bucharest against Czechoslovakia, another one of the rivals. For this match, we have the following lineup. Silvia Lung, Mircea Rednik, Gino Iorgulescu, captain of the team Kostika Stefanescu, Nicolae Ungurianu, Ionel Agustin, Ladisla Boloni, Michael Klein, Ili Balac, Romulus Gabor, replaced by Ion Jolgu in the 46th minute, Ryudion Kamataru, he'd be replaced by Ion Andon in the 61st minute. So this match, Romania would lose at home 1 0. Czechoslovakia would score a penalty kick in the 40th minute through Ladislav Vizek. How was this result um, regarded in Romania? Was, was there any feeling that they may have been overconfident after beating Italy? Somehow, yes. Uh, I remember the headlines of, of the newspapers before the match saying that the players would like to have another night with torches because this is referring to the atmosphere against Italy where at the end of the match, the crowd was saluting the victory with torches. Uh, it was the last match at home on home soil for, for those qualifiers and also was uh, decisive for Czechoslovakia because if they were to lose, they would have uh, lost the chances to, to qualify. Probably this uh, overconfidence uh, after the, the match against Italy, after some good results reflected in, in uh, this uh, uh, loss. Uh, the comments after the match said, again, we are not able to play some highly important matches. Referencing to, to the matches uh, that we lost uh, in previous World Cup qualifiers. 
decisive matches. They were wondering, is this the big problem of the Romanian football that we're not able to focus on, on these very important matches? And uh, they were saying uh, the team was not <laughs> effective. They uh, were dominating, but were not able to score a goal. And there were also comments about the penalty. The penalty, some, many people said that uh, it shouldn't have been awarded. Let's say that the referee of that time, Alexis Pornet, usually brought us bad luck in a few matches. But after all, uh, it happened. The, the, the story ended in happy end. But for that match, he awarded a penalty kick that many said it was not. It was the decisive goal of uh, the match. And it was our last match on home soil for those qualifiers. Ahead of the final qualifier of the season versus Sweden, there's one last friendly match. On June 1st, the team traveled to Sarajevo to face Yugoslavia. So for this match, we have Dumitru Moraru, Mircea Rednik, Gino Yorgulescu. He will be replaced by international debutant Konstantin Stanku of Argus Pitesti in the 70th minute. Ion Andon, Ion Montiano, he replaced by Ion Bogdan in the 72nd minute. Ionel Agustin, George Multescu of Dinamo Bucharest, he replaced by international debutant Lika Movila of Dinamo Bucharest in the 70th minute. Captain of the team, Ladisla Boloni, Michael Klein, he replaced by another international debutant, Stefan Jovan of Stewa Bucharest in the 81st minute. Marcel Koras, he replaced by Romulus Gabor in the 81st minute. And Floria Vetus of Dinamo Bucharest. And we should also mention that this was the final cap for Johan Bogdan. All his caps were in 1982 and 1983. So Yugoslavia won this match 1-0. Ion Montianu deflected Safet Susic's shot in the 57th minute. And Yugoslavia were victorious. We come to the final qualifier of the season on June 9th when Sweden in Stockholm hosted Romania. We have the following lineup. Silvia Lung, Mircea Rednik, Gino Iorgulescu, captain of the team Kostika Stefanescu, Nicolai Ungurianu, Orel Ticlianu, he replaced by Ionel Agustin in the 72nd minute, Ion Andon, Ladisla Boloni, Michael Klein, Rodion Kamataru, Ili Balac, and he replaced by Ion Jolgu in the 89th minute. So Romania would win this match 1-0. In the 29th minute, a long cross from the Romanian defense was headed out poorly by a Swedish defender, right in the path of the onrushing Rodion Kamataru, who just went on and shoot past Thomas Ravelli. Did this win against Sweden make up for the loss against Czechoslovakia? Let's say that uh, after the, the loss uh, against Czechoslovakia, there were critics, as I was saying. But uh, I remember about some uh, headlines and some opinions saying we lost a battle, but we didn't lose the war yet. Let's provide confidence to the players and to, to Mircea Lucescu and see what's next. Although we were having three more away matches. What I th- also think here happened that probably Sweden was overconfident. We are coming after a loss against Czechoslovakia. We had finished our home matches. And it seemed that we didn't have so so many good chances. But the match in Sweden brought us back 
to the qualifying path. I remember the one that was broadcasting again, it was Christian Sopescu was saying that when they came to stadium, the Swedish uh, spectators were showing them three, four fingers, meaning how many goals they were going to score. And we had very good chances. I remember about hitting a post before uh, this goal scored by Kamataro. One important and interesting thing to mention here, the match was broadcasted by Cristian Sopescu, who was the main voice of the Romanian television at that time. And he took some time during uh, his commentary to say one longer phrase, saying there are players that made their duty for the national team and for the Romanian football. They should be allowed to go abroad and play for foreign, for foreign clubs. And for this phrase... He was suspended from uh, the Romanian television. When he came back, they announced him, you are no longer going to comment because the policy of the communist state at that time was not to allow players to go abroad. And he was suspended for six years, for 1983, from, from, for, from this match, to 1989, when uh, the Romanian revolution came. One important thing to mention is that he was allowed to comment the final in 89, Milan Stella, but without telling his name. People recognized his voice, of course, but he was not allowed to say, I am Christian Zopes. He was allowed to comment that because Lakatush was asking for it, say he will bring us good luck. It wasn't the case, but this is an interesting uh, Thing to mention that the match in Sweden brought to the suspension of this very, very important commentator and journalist from Romania. You've mentioned another symbol of Romania's revival this season was Universite Craiova's run to the semi-finals of the UEFA Cup. Can you say a little bit about their European campaign and maybe also the state of Romanian club football at this time? Yes, I previously mentioned that Universitata Craiova was the team that was providing the club, that was providing the most players for the national team. It was nicknamed at that time Craiova Maxima because it was at its heights. And I mentioned Lung, Ungureanu, Balac, Cicleanu, Camataru, Ștefănescu, Cârțu. I hope I'm not missing anyone or at least anyone important. So the skeleton was based on Universitatea Craiova. And they had excellent results during that season. They were able to eliminate Bordeaux, who was uh, having important players from the national French team who had shined in, in 82. He had eliminated Kaiserslautern. And they lost only to Benfica by the away goals rule. So there were uh, situations sometimes when people that were not usually regular play, regularly playing in uh, Universita Craiova were coming to the national team. I was mentioning uh, Kurtzu and uh, Joel Go. Yes, they were coming to the national team and Joel Go even uh, scored uh, the decisive goal uh, in Bratislava against uh, Czechoslovakia at the, the last match uh, of the qualifiers. So these two things, the national team and the European adventure of Universitata Krava went hand in hand. You mentioned that the skeleton, the backbone of the team was relatively consistent for this season. How would you define the general tactics of Luchescu in this season? So it was expected that we were to face very strong opponents. From the beginning, when we saw Italy, Sweden, Czechoslovakia, it was clear that we are going to have extremely tough opponents. And uh, the, uh, the main uh, tactics uh, was uh, to not to attack 
very strongly, but I think he, he Lucescu was able to inherit some ideas from uh, Angelo Niculescu, who was uh, his coach in the 70s, and he was also the coach that qualified Romania for the World Cup in Mexico 1970. Angelo Niculescu was introducing what it was called temporization. He was sometimes he were uh, passing uh, the ball, waiting uh, for uh, the op opponent to open itself and then try to, to be decisive. Probably a good example of this kind is uh, the goal that you mentioned against Sweden by Kamataro. Let's say that in Sweden, the hosts, the Swedish team dominated most of the game, but the highest opportunities were on the Romanian side. So I think this was according to the opponents that we're having in the groups and to the qualities of the players. They are doubtless, we had doubt, doubtless, we had high quality players at that time. And at the end of this season, you've said, you know, there's a good group of players, there's been good results. What was the general feeling for the future of Romanian football at that time? Again, uh, we have even greater hopes because there were two more uh, matches, away matches. One with Cyprus that seemed to be more accessible, even if uh, Cyprus had the made a draw at home against Italy and another draw against Czechoslovakia, from what I remember. So we were still confident. All these things, the quality of the players, the results both at the level of the club and at of, of the clubs and at the level of the national team were providing us uh, uh, very good confidence. I will mention here about, you asked about the atmosphere. Something happened during that uh, summer. Something, a big mistake at administrative level. Romania was not allowed to have a team in the Cup Winners' Cup because the final of the Romanian Cup was played too late. And there was a deadline for announcing the teams and they were asking, who are you going to have as a team in the Cup Winners' Cup? And they said it will be either Universitatea Craiova or Politecnica Timișoara, the two teams that were playing the final of the cup. I said, no, we would like the exact team. And they didn't care. They played the final whenever they wanted. They said, okay, you are not, we are not going to allow your team to come to the Cup Winners' Cup. And Universitatea Craiova won that final, but they had to play in the UEFA Cup. And Fecharis Pitesh, who had to play in the UEFA Cup, was not allowed to participate any longer. And that was a big mistake at the administrative level that shadowed somehow the results from the field. There were resignations, there were changes at the federation level at that time, but nothing was to be done to fix things. We lost one place in Europe because of this administrative decision to play too late the final of the Romanian Cup. In a future podcast, we'll discuss this following season of 83-84, where Romania would qualify to the Euros for the first time. Once again, we'd like to thank Mr. Tudos for his participation in his interview. As always, feel free to leave questions and comments. You may contact me on Twitter, I'm at SP1873, and you may contact me on my blog and on Facebook, I'm under Soccer Nostalgia. Mr. Paul Whittle can be contacted on Twitter at 1888letter, and his blog is The1888letter. You may follow the podcast on Spotify, on Google, on Apple, and Stitcher, all under Soccer Nostalgia Talk Podcast. Please leave a review, rate, and subscribe if you like the podcast. Mr. Tudos can be contacted on Twitter at Catalin Tudos5 and also on Facebook under Catalin Tudos. And again, all this information is listed on the blog and the podcast listings. To Catalin, thank you. 
for thank you so time. much thank you for inviting me yeah thank you very enjoyable best. discussion thank you i uh, hope to see you next time to the next time thank you thank you and look to speak look forward to speaking again